and then we are switching slightly. We are still, we are still within the conjugal system, but from another angle. Uh, Dr. Lin from the Netherlands will tell us about the effect of the P38 alpha kinase inhibitor neflamipod on the basal forebrain in patient assessed by structural MRI. Thank you, Dr. Jacob Jacobini. Yes. <laughs> Thank Almost you. Correct, but not totally. <laughs> Okay, I will uh, practice it. Uh, yes, thank you. Oh, also, uh, hopefully I will soon become a doctor. I'm a last year PhD student uh, of Amsterdam UMC. Um, and uh, thank you for sticking around until the very end of the conference. Um, I hope I can deliver some uh, very preliminary uh, yet interesting results uh, in the uh, effect of a P38 alpha kinase inhibitor on basal forebrain volume in Alzheimer's disease. Um, this is the list of disclosure. Um, as we may all know, uh, cholinergic dysfunction uh, degeneration is uh, well evident in Alzheimer's disease, uh, accompanied by the um, reduce of cholinergic neurons in the basal forebrain, particularly uh, in the uh, nucleus basal marinates, the NBM, labeled by uh, cholinergic uh, ST transferase chats. Um, Alongside, there are amyloid beta accumulation and uh, phosphorylated tau uh, tangles, and this all uh, results in the reduced cholinergic innervation in the cortex. As you can see here, that in Alzheimer's disease, uh, there's a uh, significantly reduced of cholinergic fibers uh, in the cortex. And this, uh, of course, results in the cognitive decline and uh, symptoms in the Alzheimer's disease. And currently, a standard way uh, of uh, reduce this uh, decline is by administer the uh, cholinergic uh, inhibitor, as the previous uh, presenters have uh, addressed. However, the effects are uh, often mixed, and it's uh, often uh, only for symptomatic treatments. Um, currently, uh, one of the current uh, development in uh, Alzheimer's treatment is to focus on the uh, P38 alpha kinase, which is uh, linked to the uh, neuroinflammation, amyloid beta plaque formation, as well as uh, phosphorylated uh, tau phosphorylation uh, and related synaptic dysfunction, as uh, one of the talk uh, from Dr. Stefano Ska uh, mentioned it in, uh, on Thursday. So um, actually, uh, it uh, greatly uh, induces uh, phosphorylation of the tau, and it actually uh, has been shown in a previous uh, clinical trials in Alzheimer's patients that um, the patients uh, administered with the uh, niflamapimod, which is uh, NFMD, uh, it is a small uh, oral uh, inhibitor of the P38 alpha kinase. It shows that. Um, a great uh, uh, reduce of both both phosphorylated tau and total tau in the CSF, as you can see, and the NFMD treated patients in yellow has a reduced level uh, in both uh, of both tau markers uh, after the treatment. In addition, um, NFMD uh, was shown to restore the cholinergic uh, neurons in a Down syndrome uh, transgenic mice model. Um, as you can see here, that it restores both the uh, number of the cholinergic neurons as well as the morphology uh, of the neurons, uh, possibly via the um, mechanism of decreasing the uh, RAB5 uh, activation and uh, unblock the endosomal uh, singling uh, in, the, in the neurons. Um, in the behavioral test, they also show that these uh, NFMD uh, treated uh, mice, they have uh, restored locomotor uh, ability. And in the same paper, uh, they also showed that uh, they did it in a uh, clinical trial in a DLB patients. They showed improvements uh, in the cognition and uh, function as assessed by the uh, clinical dementia rating skills and the uh, time up and go, uh, which is uh, kind of the functional uh, aspect of uh, daily movement. Um, they show that the NFMD treated uh, patients uh, compared to placebo group, uh, there's uh, uh, improvement in both cognition and function. 
However, we don't really know, of course, in in vivo patients, uh, whether this NFMD is uh, acting uh, on the uh, cholinergic neurons, particularly on the uh, NBM that I mentioned briefly has a greater degeneration in Alzheimer's disease. In fact, um, there are ways to measure uh, cholinergic degenerations in vivo, which is by using uh, MRI uh, techniques that, that measures the integrity of the NBM in Alzheimer's disease. Previous studies, uh, a very nice study uh, developed by, oh, uh, assessed by uh, Dr. Schmitz in 2020, they showed that the degeneration, so the NBM uh, volume loss, precedes the uh, volume loss within the internal cortex. And actually, it reli reli reliably predicts the uh, cortical pathological spread. Um, so it may be a early uh, event in AD progression. Um, previously, uh, our group also showed a uh, correlation between the microstructural change within the MBM uh, with the cholinergic uh, neuronal loss in a postmodern in situ MRI and histopathology, uh, histopathology study in Alzheimer's disease. In addition, um, previous functional MRI studies show that the connectivity between NBM and the cortex uh, is correlated with the uh, memory functions in preclinical AD. So all of these um, MRI studies uh, suggest that um, the MRI uh, biomarkers uh, targeting the NBM might be a potential uh, marker for uh, disease progression and potentially for uh, assessing the treatment effects uh, in, uh, for the disease. So the aim of the current study is to assess the um, effects of the NFMD on the uh, NBM in early AD using structural and functional MRI. Um, for this, um, the cohort uh, and the clinical trial was previously uh, published in this paper uh, where it includes the uh, double-blinded uh, dose control patients, uh, both male and female, aged around 60 to a uh, 89 years old, with the MCI due to uh, Alzheimer's or uh, with a mild uh, Alzheimer's disease, um, confirmed by uh, clinical uh, amyloid PET uh, 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 scans, uh, assessing the amyloid beta loads. And the MMSE is between uh, 20 to 28. Um, so in total, uh, we include uh, 15 uh, early Alzheimer's patients uh, with a slightly balanced uh, gender ratio. Uh, the age uh, medium is 66 uh, years old, and the MMSC medium is around 23. Um, so, oops. so we collect uh, at baseline the uh, three Tesla uh, structural and functional MRI, uh, and then followed by 12 weeks of the NFMD either with 40 or 125 milligram uh, twice daily. And then at follow-up, we scan again the uh, structural and functional MRI. And from these MRI data, uh, we uh, calculated the brain, uh, global brain volume, uh, as well as the NBM uh, volume using a stereology-based atlas uh, and using FSL to uh, collect these uh, measures. Um, and from the functional MRI, specifically the resting state uh, MRI, we uh, calculate the connectivity between the NBM and the uh, seven uh, uh, regular uh, fMRI resting state uh, networks. Um, and we calculated the static and dynamic connectivity, where the static connectivity is the correlation between the time series uh, regionally. So it kind of uh, tells you how uh, the brain regions work functionally together um, under certain stimuli. And we also calculated the dynamic uh, connectivity, which is the coefficient of variation between the regional time series. But um, it kind of tells you how the brain, uh, how brain is flex flexible uh, under different kind of environmental stimuli, because it takes the time frame of each um, collation between the time series. So um, here are the results. Um, while we observe a decrease in the global brain volume with the average of 0.7%. This is not a significant, but this is uh, the uh, observation we have. Um, we found there's a uh, increase in the NBM volume uh, with p-value of uh, 0.026. Um, oh, to briefly mention, I kind of missed this, um, because we have a sample size that is 15 uh, patients, kind of small, so we use um, a pairwise t-test uh, for this preliminary result. So we uh, 
see that there's an increase in MBM volume in these uh, NFMD-treated uh, patients, uh, with the average of 3% uh, of increase. Um, you do see that there are some uh, patients that shows uh, uh, a decreased volume, but uh, in total there are 8 out of uh, 15 participants' patients showing more than 3% of increase in the MBM volume. This is in contrast with the previous literature showing that annually there is actually uh, usually a decrease of MBM volume in uh, untreated Alzheimer's patients. As for the um, functional connectivity, we uh, see that there's no change in static uh, connectivity. However, there's an uh, increase uh, dynamic connectivity, connectivity between the MBM and the deep gray matter uh, regions, um, showing that the average uh, of increased dynamic connectivity is around 11 uh, percentage and uh, 6 out of uh, 13 uh, patients have more than 10 percent of uh, increase. So um, from this uh, preliminary result, we found there's an increase of the MBM volume and uh, increased dynamic connectivity between the MBM and deep gray matter in uh, early Alzheimer's patients treated with NFMD. As I mentioned before, uh, usually in untreated uh, Alzheimer's patients, there's a reduction in MBM volume with a rate of 0.5 to 1 percentage uh, yearly. And uh, its microstructural change within the MBM is associated with the cholinergic uh, cell loss. And in fact, um, rather than a direct uh, neuronal death, um, actually these uh, basal forebrain cholinergic neurons uh, would shrink and uh, undergo a process of depletion of phenotypic markers, such as uh, the CHAT uh, markers or uh, aberrant uh, signalings like NGF signalings or uh, intersomal uh, activation signalings. And these all leave the cholinergic neurons in a atrophic uh, state. So they are not uh, actually die. Um, and in fact, the um, regression uh, of the atrophy and the uh, restoration of the functional uh, profile of the MBM that we observe from these uh, NFMD-treated patients um, may uh, suggest a restoration of the uh, cholinergic, cholinergic uh, function and um, um, uh, function and function and uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, the cholinergic neurons, but that we couldn't really tell. But this kind of in line with the previous uh, uh, transgenic mouse model uh, results. So um, in conclusion, um, the NFNB treatment is associated with increased uh, MBM volume and uh, increased dynamic connectivity between MBM and the degrade matter, suggesting that the uh, P30A of uh, kinase inhibition has possibly a, a, a positive uh, impact on the cholinergic uh, degeneration in Alzheimer's disease. And that um, MRI-based functional and structural assessment might be uh, within the NBM, might be potential uh, markers for uh, assessing the therapeutic effects. And of course, as you may already uh, notice, that there are still uh, there is still many work needs to be done, uh, including uh, including a placebo control uh, uh, patients um, in this clinical trial and uh, within to scan in the same scanner and also uh, correlation in the with the clinical outcome measures uh, is warranted. So at last, um, I would like to thank uh, all the co-authors, particularly uh, Dr. Allen from EPI and uh, Dr. Schoenheim, who uh, provide this opportunity for me to join this um, project, and also my supervisor, Lauren Yachman, and uh, other co-authors who help out the uh, projects and analysis. Um, for uh, questions that uh, regarding the clinical trials and drug developments, you're very welcome to contact uh, Dr. Alam at EIP, and uh, I would, I'm very happy to take the rest of the questions. Oh, and thank you, uh, thanks all the patients for the clinical trials. Very largely thanks. Question. Any question? Well, I, I okay, please. <laughs> What, what is P38 alpha? Um, P38 alpha is a kinase that works, um, that is 
related to the RAB uh, activation and also that is related to endosomal uh, signalings. So it actually was related to uh, the NGF uh, signaling as well. That is very uh, closely related to the cholinergic neurons functioning and also um, maintaining the phenotypic markers. Yeah. Okay, so, so it's thought that it would selectively, like, do you see any other effects of, like, gray, I mean, gray matter expansion of the NBM? I mean, that's, that's pretty striking, right? I mean, yes. So do you see that? Did you look anywhere else in the brain to see if that was specific to the NBM? or? Was yeah, that, that is a very good question. Actually, I didn't include in this uh, presentation because of the time, but we also look at the hippocampal volume. We didn't see any uh, increase uh, in those patients. Okay. Yeah. And your ROI, was it was just the NBM or was it the entire, did you include the septal areas? And uh, no, just the NBM. Uh, okay. From the stereology base okay. uh, atlas, yeah. there were CH1 to CH4, but we particularly look at the CH4 NBM because okay. it's uh, the posterior NBM is uh, shown to degenerate the earliest in Alzheimer's disease. And since these patients are early uh, AD, so we look at the region. Okay. And your, and your current sort of interpretation is that what you're doing is sort of restoring dystrophic neurons. So they're not dead. You're not like, you're not promoting neurogenesis in the basal no. forebrain with it. You're, you're, you're kind of restoring neurons to their healthy, robust state. Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, no, I, I carefully did not use yes. neurogenesis. Yes. But uh, indeed, uh, in previous uh, mouse model, they showed that there's increased uh, number in the neurons labeled by uh, cholinergic estrotransferase CHAT, which is uh, one of the phenotypic markers of uh, cholinergic neurons. So because there's a, a, a loss of these markers, meaning that we cannot label them uh, histologically, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that they are gone. Okay. Uh, yeah, so our, well, as for this project, uh, our uh, hypothesis is that uh, we restore them from uh, atrophic uh, state to a healthier state. And do you have any other imaging markers on these patients besides the uh, fMRI and structural MRI? Are you hinting at the diffusion MRI? Um, I'm, uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we hope to include diffusion MRI, but as you so know... So you do have that in your patients? Uh, no, not so much because it's uh, uh, data from the clinics and it's uh, pretty hard to implement uh, diffusion MRI in clinics. But uh, we do have like structural, of course, flare T2, like standard ones. Uh, and diffusion, of course, would be interesting to look okay. at. Uh, yeah. I can catch you after the symposium so we can follow up. Yes, thank, <laughs> thank you, you, Dr. Smith. Um, Dr. Lin, I was not surprised to see this effect. Because in your, I think the first or the second slides show it's live from a paper from Mesulam. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Mesulam, he showed quite a few years ago that the nucleus, the cholinergic neurons are specific selective target of tau. As a matter of fact, in his paper, he indicated that tau is coming very early. Mm -hmm. Don't tell this around in this meeting, because then <laughs> something will happen to you. But maybe the tau is even before a beta. Mm -hmm. So therefore, this is very specifically, you're hitting the good target. With regard to the increase you see, is about the same that in the laboratory of Dr. Dubois in Paris, they show with, I think, one year effect of donepezil. So mm -hmm. donepezil, but I think donepezil made that the volume did not change, did not it did not increase, but did not change. So this also was confirmed, the cholinergic effect on the volume. There are not many. Mm -hmm. I remember only this, this paper. And finally, if in your next clinical trial, if you can demonstrate and you can go on successfully, then you may have an added effect. So you will have the tau effect, what, what, what means to decrease tau, Plus, you have the cholinergic effect. So you have two effects. Yes, actually, uh, I was in the cholinergic session. Yes. I have to say, thanks for sharing all your wisdom during the session. Yeah. Uh, you share a lot of your thoughts. And um, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, as what uh, Dr. Stefanoska mm -hmm. showed that the P38 uh, alpha kinase, the master yeah. site uh, for phosphorylation mm -hmm. in tau, 
um, actually it targets both uh, uh, the tau uh, clearance uh, and also the restoration of cholinergic neurons and of course uh, we want to revi revive I would I wouldn't say regenesis but yeah revive the neurons so that we can restore their functions it's not enough to clearing the uh, uh, pathology but we need to try to revive the neurons so to restore their function so I think uh, yeah uh, it's yeah. kind of promising and for me I work in your imaging so uh, it's really interesting for me to uh, really target this NBM and cholinergic neurons uh, to yeah. to develop MRI biomarkers for that so read the two paper of mesolam 206 where is the problem tau and the cholinergic mm -hmm. system and also you can read a paper, Jacobini et al. Brain 2022. We, we are talking about Tau and cholinergic system. Yes. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Now